believe I am live on Facebook. Yes, I am. I am live on Facebook. Uh, so just wanted to let my group know. And yes, I am doing a lot of prophetic word on Mother's Day. I know it's Mother Day, Mother's Day. I know a lot of people are out. But I also know that if the Lord gives me a word to release, I need to release it. And so uh, some people are going to catch me live and some people are going to catch me on the replay. But I got to put it out there. Got to be out there. You got to release the word of the Lord for people to drink from it. Okay. So <clears throat> I just want to be sure I uh, came on post and did my job and showed up. So uh, I'm going to start in a minute. But yes, I do have a word today, a lot of prophetic word. And, uh, and wow. And it's going to be life changing for some. It's going to bring life to many. It's going to clear up some things. And uh, so I just praise God for it. I just praise God for it. Okay. 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 All right, two thirty. So we're going to get started. Okay, we're going to get started. <clears throat> All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Just thank you for this day. Thank you for another uh, another opportunity, another chance to release your prophetic word, oh God. Lord, I must decrease so you can increase. So I die to myself right now, oh God. Please forgive me and wash me clean and let the Holy Ghost flow through me, oh God. Let what is said right now be what you want said. Oh God, we need to hear from you. So I thank you for the prophetic. I thank you for, Father, for the precious Holy Spirit. I thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. Thank you for just an opportunity to be a part of your kingdom and your program. So breathe through me now, oh God. Let the words be spoken what you want spoken, because many are going to be healed and delivered from this word. And I declare and decree that those that receive and walk in this prophetic word will receive healing and deliverance and the breaking of bondages that they've been carrying their whole lives, oh God. And, and the birthing of miracles, a whole new life. I thank you for it, and I believe you for it, and I'm excited about it, and I'm expecting you to do great things. And we give you the glory in all things because your name is worthy of the praise. We can't do anything without you. We are only even alive because you extend us breath. So we give you glory as a creator, we give you glory as a redeemer, and we give you glory as the judge. And I bless your name, oh God, and I thank you. And so this Mother's Day, let your words be spoken and ring true. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. All right, here we go. Today's live prophetic word <clears throat> is, uh, oh, got some folks here. All right. Let me say hello. Hello, sis. And hello, sis Bane. All right. Today's live prophetic word is arrested. Today's live prophetic word is arrested. Prophet Taylor, what in the world are you doing prophesying on arrested on Mother's Day? You'll see. I'll tie it all together for you. Okay. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the story of Hannah and Samuel, Hannah and Samuel were prominent figures in the Old Testament. Samuel was the last prophet that Israel had before they switched to the monarchy. God had been leading 
uh, when he led Israel out of Egypt, he led them by the hand of Moses, led them by a prophet. And then he, for a while they had judges, but God had been leading them through men that he had appointed uh, to lead the nation. And the nation would come before God and speak to God on behalf of the people. And then God would speak to that leader that he chose and they would take his words back to the nation. That was the system. And then the Hebrews said that they wanted a king because all the other nations around them had a king and they wanted to be like that. And God told them, you don't need a king, you have me. But they pressed and pressed till finally the Lord said, okay. And Samuel was very upset. And God told Samuel, don't take it personally. They're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. That's Samuel. But Samuel's birth was an entire story in itself. That's what we're gonna be looking at today, the birth of Samuel. Now, this word is going to set a whole lot of people free, but you're going to have to listen to it from start to finish. So if you're coming on the broadcast late, go back to the top of the video. Do not jump in the middle of this video. Did you hear me say that? Do not jump in the middle of this video. Go back to the top of this video and watch it from the top. Have you ever wondered why certain things have happened to you in your life? Have you ever said to God, this isn't fair? Have you ever cried out to God in frustration or anger or anguish? And you said, why did this happen to me? Why are these things happening? What is, what is going on with me and this? Why, why is this even in my life? Why did I go through this? I didn't deserve this. I didn't do anything for this. I don't even understand what's going on. Uh, and what if things happened to you that were brutal? What if things happened to you as a child that were very, very ugly? What if things happened to you and you, you could make no sense of it? You had no rhyme or reason to it. And sometimes you carry for years. Well, this happened to me when I was a baby or this happened to me when I was a child or this happened to me when I was an adolescent. And, and maybe you never really got an answer. Or maybe you never really understood what was going on. Uh, I wish I could tell you uh, some personal stories because uh, there's some personal stories where there's some stuff in my life and the life of some other people around me where sometimes you have to scratch your head and you say, wait, 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 why? Why is this happening to me? Well, I don't understand what's going on. You ever been there? You ever cried out to God in anger or frustration or with questions? I stopped by to tell you that there are answers. And many times it's sad to say you might not hear them in church because the answers are going to be theology busting. They're going to be answers that burst your myths and your bubbles about life and tell you the truth about what's really going on in life. So we're gonna look at some of that today because what about those times when we cried out to God, but particularly as children, when we didn't understand why we were hated, when we didn't understand why we were cast out, when we didn't understand why we were abused, when we didn't, we didn't understand out of all the people on earth, why this happened to me? God, where are you? God, where are you when I'm in pain? God, where are you when I'm, when I'm deeply disappointed? God, where are you when I'm abused? God, where are you when all that stuff is happening? Have you ever been there? Have you ever cried out to the Lord like that? Okay, we gonna answer them questions today, but the answers are not what you think. So I'm going to repeat, you're gonna have to watch this video from the jump. You can't jump in the middle of this teaching, this prophetic word, okay? Today we're going to talk about, on Mother's Day, we're gonna talk about a very famous mother in the Bible. And I know she probably didn't think she was famous at the time, and I know she probably didn't think she would end up becoming famous, but her story is very interesting. Her story is dramatic. Her story has changes. Her story has ups and downs. Her story has anguish and grief. Her story has uh, so many twists and turns as a part of it. And I'm talking about Hannah, okay? Who is Hannah in the Old Testament? Okay, in the Old Testament, Hannah, also sometimes she's referred to as Anna, 
but I like Hannah with the H. When you see the H, when you see the Hebrew breath mark on a name, it means that God breathed on that person. That is why God changed Abram, Abram's name. When God first called that man the father of faith, he was named Abram. God changed his name to Abraham. And when he called his wife, her, her name was Sarai. But God changed her name to Sarah. Sarah. You know why? Because the Hebrew breath mark it indicates God breathing on that person. That's why Abraham and Sarah were able to have a child at respectively 100 years of age and 90 years of age because God breathed on them and put life back in their bodies for them to conceive. That's why there was a name change to add the breath mark to say God breathed on me. Okay. So that's why I like Hannah because that's exactly what happens here. So Hannah also spelled Anna the mother of Samuel. Samuel was a Jewish judge and prophet. Hannah was childless as one of the two wives of Elkanah. She prayed for a son, promising to dedicate him to God. Her prayers were answered and she brought the child Samuel to Shiloh for religious training. In the Talmud, she is named as one of seven prophetesses and her prayer is in the Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, first day service, exemplifying successful petitions to God. So Hannah got a place in history. Hannah got a place in uh, the Jewish calendar. Hannah got a place in the Jewish prayers. Hannah has a place in Christian history, okay? And I'm sure she didn't think at the time that this is my place in history, that this is what I'm going through, is gonna give me a name, is gonna give me a name. Okay, but some of y'all looking at me right now, the stuff that you've been through, the pain, the anguish, the unfairness of it all, God is going to take that and use it to give you a name. And all of your trials and all of your tests are going to turn into a testimony. And hundreds of years, thousands of years after you're dead, People are going to be telling your story. Mm, good God Almighty. That's for somebody right there. That's why, that's why you hear me say it every week. That's why you need the prophetic in your life. That's why you need the prophetic in your life. Okay? Because God opens up his point of view. God opens up his vision. And, and some of y'all looking at me right now, God's going to give you a name. And that name is going to exceed anything that you've been through. And God is in fact going to take exactly what you've been through and use it to launch your name as a testimony to women and people for generations yet unborn. What did I just say? What you're talking about, Prophet Taylor? I'm talking about there are girls that haven't been born yet that you're not going to live to see get born that are going to hear about your story and it's going to change their lives and encourage them to faith. That's how important you are in the scheme of things. And I know some of you that have been abused, nobody ever told you how important you are. Okay. I'm not going to get ahead of myself because I want to explain it in detail, but nobody ever told you how important you are. That's why you've been through so much. So let's get into it. We're going to get into the details and we're going to answer those questions. We're going to read in 1 Samuel. We're going to start at 1 Samuel and we're going to read down to uh, we're going to read several verses. Okay. Uh, so just let's just start at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. There's two books of Samuel, Samuel in the original Hebrew. It's actually one book. It got split into two, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, but this is originally one story, one book. So I'm reading out of 1 Samuel chapter 1, and I'm reading out of the authorized King James Version. So I'm not going to read it all at once, but I'm going to stop and expound as we go. Now, there was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophim of Mount Ephraim, 
and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, that's Samuel's mama, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. Eli was the high priest at the time, and the holy city was Shiloh, where the house, the temple of the Lord were, where the house of the priests were. So Hannah is living in a polygamous situation. She's living polygamy. Her husband's name was Elkanah. Hannah was one wife, and Elkanah had another wife named Penina. Now, research will show you that Penina had at least or about nine children. So she just kept uh, popping out baby after baby after baby. And Elkanah would lay with Hannah, but Hannah had no children. Okay. So we're going to go into Hannah's grief. That's 1 Samuel 1 and 4. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. Okay, so when it's time for Elkanah, the man, the polygamous man, to give an offering, he covered all his sons and his daughters by Penina. He gave a worthy portion unto Hannah too, because he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. So in the Berean Study Bible, it says, but to Hannah, uh, um, uh, or also the name Hannah can mean favored. Uh, he would give a double portion, okay? For he loved her even though the Lord had closed her womb. So in other words, even though Hannah was childless, Elkanah still loved her and gave her a portion. Why is that significant? That's significant because he had every right to not give her anything because she didn't have any children. So in the culture of the time, the whole point was to have many wives. So you could have many sons and daughters and carry on your legacy and carry on. That's why at the beginning, you see that it, it named the genealogy of Elkanah, his forefathers, because it went back uh, one, two, three, four, four men before Elkanah. That's why that's at the beginning of the chapter. So he had two wives, so he could have plenty of children to carry on his lineage. And he didn't really have to give anything to Hannah, okay? But Hannah already had favor, even though the Lord had shut up her womb. What do you do when the thing you want the most, when the thing you need or you think you need, or when the thing that you have longed for looks like God has given you a denial, look like his answer is no, or look like it's not playing out like you thought it was going to play out, because the Bible says clearly that the Lord had shut up her womb. And that's why today's prophetic word is arrested. What do you do if you have been arrested by divine purpose? Because if you have been arrested by divine purpose, listen to me carefully, you are never going to get into it separate from pain. Oh, Prophet Taylor, I don't want to hear that. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's true. You are never, ever, ever, ever going to get into your divine purpose apart from pain. Now, does God want you to experience pain? No. Then why does it happen? Because many times is God getting your attention. If you was going along happy-go-lucky and everything was all good, everything was coming up, you know, just five by five, everything was aces. Do you think you pay attention then? And, and, and we're going to read it in a minute. Many times pain, disappointment, and grief struggle is the only thing that makes your heart open. Have you noticed that many people, not everybody, many people of great privilege have little to no compassion for others? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that some of the people that have the most in this life have the worst attitudes? 
Have you noticed that some of the people that have uh, the most things, the most, most privilege, the most favor, the most access, the most opportunity, fritter it away, throw it away, take it for granted, and don't know how to love their fellow man. Have you noticed that? That's not true for every person of privilege, but it is true for a lot. Do you know why? Because they've had privilege their whole lives. See, living a life separate from pain doesn't always bring out your compassion. It doesn't make your worldview broad. It doesn't make you understanding. Many times it makes you snotty. Many times it makes you stubborn. Many times it makes you deeply ungrateful because of everything you've ever had was handed to you. And you never worked for anything. You never suffered. You never had to deny yourself. You never had to go through anything. Then it's nigh, it's blessed near impossible for you to appreciate life's blessings. Haven't you ever noticed that? That some of the people that have the most have the worst attitudes? Why do you think that is? Because if you've had privilege your whole life and your parents did everything they could to remove pain from your equation and everything for you just came super easy. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at verse five, uh, verse six, First Samuel 1 and 6. And her adversary, that's talking about Penina, Elkanah's other wife, her is talking about Hannah. So her adversary, Hannah's adversary, Penina, also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up Hannah's womb. That means Penina got in Hannah's face and said, ah, I got kids and you don't. How you doing there, Hannah? Oh, having any babies today? I am. How's that pregnancy coming? Oh, I'm sorry, you're not pregnant. How's that nursing coming, Hannah? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have any kids to nurse, do you? <laughs> Imagine that, she did stuff like that. She got in Hannah's face and the Bible said she provoked her sore. She didn't just provoke her, she taunted her. She taunted her, okay? And she provoked her viciously. She vexed her. You ever been vexed? You ever been around people that look like they're not happy till you crying? You ever been, been around people look like they ain't happy until you broken down on the ground in tears? Because they're trying to vex you. The Bible says that Hannah uh, was provoked sore by Penina. That Penina was trying to frustrate her. She was trying to vex her because Hannah didn't have no kids. Then the Bible says in verse seven, as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. What does that mean? That means when they went to the house of the Lord and Elkanah was giving a portion to all of his family to offer to God, to thank God for this family, even though Hannah got a portion, she didn't have no kids. And Penina threw that in her face. Every year when they went up to the house of the Lord, but I was like, what's your portion today, Hannah? How, how many offerings you giving to the Lord for all them children? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have any, like that, okay? And Hannah wept. What's well, the difference between crying and weeping? Crying is when water's coming out your eyes. You can get something ca caught in your eye and have allergies and cry. Weeping is when the deepest well of your emotions come up because your emotions are buried deep down in your gut. Your service emotions are the one you let people see. But when your deepest emotions come up, they always come up with tears. Think about it. You don't never go into how you really feel about something and to come up with no tears. Think about that. Hannah wept and she lost her appetite. She was so frustrated and so vexed from this situation, she couldn't eat. Some of y'all looking at me right now, you've been there. You've been in situations where you have been so tormented, so frustrated, so vexed. You felt trapped. You felt trapped and you... You know, mom and daddy trying to give you some food. You're like, I don't want to eat. They're like, what's wrong with you? You can't even make them understand. You felt trapped. Now, this is going to be sensitive. What I'm about to say is going to be very, very sensitive, but I'm going to release it anyway. And here it is. If you've ever been in a situation like the movie Precious, where you were part of a family and it looked like mama was not with your dad, but mama's with a boyfriend, then it looked like that boyfriend started doing things to you he shouldn't have been doing. And you went and told your mother and she just blew you off like, girl, that's crazy. Girl, no, he didn't. Or she sided with the man. 
When you've been in situations like that, that will vex your soul to your core. When you are not being believed, you're being hurt. And the one person in charge of your well-being that's supposed to care about you more than anybody else look like she don't even care. You might have been in a situation where your birth mama, your mama cared more about the man than she did about you. And as a child, no matter what that looks like, whether it's molestation or just ignoring you or minimizing you or just straight up abuse or abandonment, no matter what that looks like, it hits you like a ton of bricks and it hurts you with a pain that you can't even put into words when you realize that mama care more about her boyfriend than she does about you. So don't tell me that the Bible is not relevant. Don't tell me that the Bible is not real. The Bible is not just a bunch of stories. The Bible is people that went through the same stuff we went through. Circumstances aren't always the same, but the emotions are. And Anna was so vexed and frustrated by this rival wife making fun, by her sister wife making fun of her that she cried and lost her appetite. Verse eight, then said Elkanah, to her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than 10 sons? Now wait just a minute. Sometimes people are trying to help you out, but they don't understand that you want deliverance from the situation you're in. So in other words, they can try to placate you all they want to, but Hannah was like, I need a baby. Yeah, you're a good husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, I need to have a baby. Because you notice that Hannah didn't really say anything <laughs> to him. Because sometimes people try to come in with their words and they're trying to say, oh, it's not that bad or whatever. And you're like, you don't understand. I need to get out this house. This situation is not going to get better. I need to go. You don't understand. I need to go back to school. I need to finish my degree. I got all, all the way down to one semester. And then I didn't finish. And it's been plaguing me. It's been on my mind for years. You don't understand. They're telling me I'm intelligent, I'm successful, that's good, but I need to graduate. I need to finish. There are some men a couple of generations back that worked their whole lives and they were functionally illiterate. They were job, worked jobs where literacy was not really a requirement. And they went back and learned how to read at 70 years of age. They went back and got a GED, a high school equivalency at 70 and 75 years of age. Why? Why would they do that if it didn't matter? Because their whole life they felt bad that they couldn't read, that's why because their whole life they wanted to graduate, that's why. And sometimes people think they can talk you out of your dream. Like, oh, look at all this other stuff you got. Why ain't you happy? That's basically what Elkanah said to his wife. You got me, you know, I'm good to you. And Hannah was like, and you don't understand, okay? What do you do when the people around you are trying to be supportive, but they don't understand? They don't understand. They don't understand that if you want to have a baby, and nothing going to scratch that itch but a baby. Okay? Verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. <clears throat> and when Hannah was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. What did the Bible just tell you? The Bible just told you? that Hannah was in bitterness of soul. That means that what Elkanah said to her didn't really help her, which proves my point. That's why I was making that point. Sometimes when you were a kid, the other adults around you are saying, you know, hang in there and it's gonna get better, a whole bunch of stuff, and that's not helping you, especially if you being abused. That's not helping you, all them platitudes they throwing out. Sometimes people are doing whatever, whatever, and you need some money. All that talking is good, but what you need is some cash. That's what's going to change your situation. Sometimes you need to get out of a situation. You've been in a situation and people are trying to say, well, you understand. And you've been trying to convince yourself, but you realize that you feel that bitterness rising up in your soul because you, you're like, I don't want to be in this situation. And Hannah was in bitterness of soul. She's like, I want to be in a situation where my rival, my sister wife, and gave my husband nine children. And I gave him none. Okay. Bible says she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. She didn't kind of weep. She wept 
sore. She didn't cry. Okay, let me read it to you in the Berean Study Bible. It says, uh, 1 Samuel 1 10, in her bitter distress, the Hebrew word there is marat from mara, that means bitter or bitterness. Hannah prayed to the Lord and wept with many tears. The word there, weep, coming out of the Hebrew means to weep or bewail. It means to bemoan. So in other words, she just wasn't lightly crying. She was wailing. She was bewailing her situation before God. And that's the first principle that I want to give you, that no matter what your situation, you got to go before God. You got to take your mask off. Many times we don't understand what God is doing in these situations. Okay. It's not pleasant. It's not what you want. It's not fair. All that might be true. But what is God trying to do in that situation? What God many times is trying to do in them situations, now don't misunderstand me, a whole lot of these situations God did not cause. This particular situation he did cause because the Bible said he closed up a womb. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Some of y'all have been abused by people full of the devil. God didn't do that. I'm going to get to that in a minute. So don't get it twisted what I'm saying. That's why so many people have been abused by religion. They try to put a one size fits all answer on every situation. This particular situation, God closed Hannah's womb. Some of y'all been in situations that when God wasn't in that at all, I'm gonna explain it. You gotta hang with me, okay? In this particular situation, what God was trying to do, and in many situations, even if they're situations, no matter what the origin of the pain, God trying to do get you to do this right here. He's trying to get your mind and your heart to open. And minds and hearts don't open with pleasure. There are some things in this world that pleasure will not teach you. Some things in this world, the only thing that opens the mind and opens the heart is pain. Okay? And so what that pain did, uh, I'll give an example from my life. I'll tell you, I, I'll make it personal. I'll tell you why I love the Lord. You know why I love the Lord? There's lots of reasons, but there's, there's a core reason. One of the core reasons I love the Lord is because when I was a child, I had a lot of questions. And a lot of people around me just didn't want to be bothered. Oh, David, you're asking me questions. Oh, David, why are you always worrying about stuff? Oh, David, you just, you just too, you this, you that. And I didn't know what to do with that. So I turned to Jesus and I started talking to God. And to my shock, I found out that God would hear and answer my prayers. And he's the only person I ever met in my life that never told me I had too many questions. He's the only person where I can go to him with anything. And he just opens wide his arms and loves me and talks to me and listens to me. And I don't know if I would love the Lord like I do if I hadn't had that pain. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that my pain since, since seemed like a whole lot of adults didn't want to be bothered. And since I had too many questions and I was just too inquisitive, looked like I turned my pain to the Lord and the Lord started explaining stuff to me. And I was like, oh, wow, I don't even know I, he'd hear me, but he did. That's why I love the Lord to this day. Because there's no question I could have that I can't take to him. There's no mood, there's no feeling, there's no experience that I could have that I can't take to Jesus. Well, that's how I know that. <laughs> because of my pain. That's how I know. That's how I know. And that's why I love the Lord to this day. Because it don't matter what I'm going through. It don't matter what I'm thinking. It doesn't matter what I need to know. He ain't going to never turn me away. He ain't going to never tell me I got too many questions. That's why. You follow me? You follow my point? That's what I'm trying to say. And some of y'all, the reason you love the Lord is because of that pain. Because <laughs> you got rejected by other people. Then you opened up to God and then you found a love that you can't find nowhere else because you can't compare God's love 
to nothing and nobody. Ain't nobody like Jesus. What that song, that song by James Cleveland, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I mean, I know he didn't originate it, but he's got a famous uh, version of it. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Because you can't even compare the love of God to anything on earth. But the reason sometimes we discover it is because we didn't have love in other places. Do you understand? So <clears throat> she was in bitterness of soul and she prayed unto the Lord and wept sore, verse 11. And she vowed a vow, good God almighty, Hannah vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head. Good God almighty. What did Hannah just say? Hannah vowed a vow. Now, let me tell you something about vows. God takes vows seriously. Don't you vow a vow unto the Lord and then think you don't have to pay it. A whole lot of Christians have been in trouble and you have said to God, Lord, if you just get me out of this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. If you ever said that to the Lord, then he's expecting you to serve him because you said you would. You can't, you can't make these play vows with God. God, it doesn't work. God don't work that way. If you make a vow to the Lord, God gonna hold you to it. And many times we've been in situations where, we, where you've been up against the wall and you're like, God, if you just let me get out of this, I will serve you. And if you said that, God wrote that down and God's gonna hold you to that. That's why some of y'all are struggling. You wonder why you the age you are and you still struggling. You still struggling because way back a long time ago, you promised God that if he delivered you, you'd serve him and you haven't done it. I don't care how long you live. I don't care how hard you run. If you vow to vow to the Lord, God takes that seriously and he's holding you to it. Hannah said, she vowed a vow. She said, oh Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine hand, may God, Hannah said to God, if you just look at this situation, man, if you look at this persecution, if you look at this situation and remember me, she said, God, don't forget me and not forget thine handmaid. She said it twice and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Stop. What did Hannah say? She asked for the specific thing that she wanted. That's what you got to do. Some of y'all haven't got your prayers answered because you haven't been honest with God about what you want. Um, let me say that one more time. Some of y'all haven't got your prayers answered because you haven't been honest with God about what you want. And God is waiting on you to be honest. And that's why the pain's still there. Because once we get in enough pain, playtime is over. And then you're going to say to God what you really want. And Hannah was specific. Then she said, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Hannah promised God, if you give me a son, I'm going to give you a servant for the rest of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head. Now that has to do with being a Nazarite. If I have time, I'll go into that. I may not have time to explain kind of the Nazarite order, but when it says no razor will come upon his head, it's a, it's a sign of a Nazarite. Uh, those that were consecrated to the service of the Lord. So Hannah was trying to show God that she was serious. She was serious. And it came to pass, verse 12, as she continued to pray before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now, Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. See, you can talk to God and everything don't have to be audible. You can be mouthing the words and speaking in your heart, but ain't no sound coming out. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, how long would thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. So here come Eli being all religious, being all critical, not even understanding the situation, coming in with all this criticism, talking about, Put away your wine, being all super holy. And Hannah answered, said, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. There it is again. There it is again. Out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, not my joy, and not my triumph, 
my complaint and grief, I poured out my heart to the Lord. So what's the point there? The point there is, is that another thing that pain does for you is that it strips you of your pride and you ain't afraid to look crazy. Sometimes when you're dealing with things of faith, sometimes when you're dealing with God, you're going to end up looking crazy. When God tells you at 75 years of old, like Abram, like he told Abram, he's going to be the father of many nations. And Abram didn't have Isaac until he was 100. That means that 25 years. 25 years when you meet people, they say, what's your name, sir? He said, my name is Abraham. Oh, that's a lovely name. That means father of many nations, right? He said, right. Well, how many children do you have? And Abraham be like, well, uh, and before he had Ishmael, he's like, well, uh, none. And then he had to say, well, uh, I got this one child with my side chick, uh, with my wife's handmaid, hey God, but uh, that's a bit of a, you know, 25 years before Isaac showed up because sometimes following God, you gonna look crazy. Sometimes walking in faith, you gonna look crazy. Sometimes you have to get to the point where your pride is gone, your dignity is gone, and you are down on your face before God, crying out with all you know. Because God responds to a heart cry, not your phoniness. And religious people like Eli are going to come in and just like Job's friend in the Bible started talking about, well, what did you do? And you must have did something wrong. And what's your sin? And Hannah was like, I'm not drunk. I haven't drinking wine. I haven't, it says wine or strong drink. That's talking about wine and whiskey, wine and liquor. <laughs> okay. Hannah's like, I'm not lit. I'm not in the house of God. Toe up. Hannah said, that's not what's happening here. Okay. But in my complaint and my grief, I've poured out my soul, poured out my soul. And that's what God is waiting on for you to pour out your soul, for you to get real and for you to get honest and for you to be willing. And that's why today's prophetic word is entitled arrested. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you thought it was deep up to this point, it's going to get deeper. <clears throat> One of the things that we struggle with the most in life is understanding that we were created for his glory. I remember when God took me through this and I remember God explained some things to me. It changed my whole everything. It changed my whole perspective. It changed my whole everything because I didn't realize how I was thinking until the Lord rebuked me. And when the Lord rebuked me, corrected me and told me what was right, I, it just changed my whole everything. One of the things we struggle with the most in life is never understanding that we were created for his glory, not our own. We exist because he wants us to. We exist because he willed it. We, we're here because he made people and he made us specifically from the seed of our father in the womb of our mother. What that means is that your life don't have to go the way you think it should go. I know, I know. I know some of y'all, your brain just said, Psh. I know some of y'all, that's the first time in your life you heard that. I know you've been going to church for years and all you ever heard in church was platitudes. What I'm giving you is the real because I'm teaching you what God taught me. What I'm giving you is the real. Your life don't have to go the way you thought it should go. That's your problem with God. That's your problem with life. You keep saying, but but my sister got this. How come I didn't get it? Didn't you fair? Ain't no such thing as fair. But my friends, they all they grew up with their biological parents. How come I grew up in a single parent home? They're not fair, because ain't no fair. Ain't no such thing as fairness. Your life, you better hear me well. Your life don't have to go the way you think. It should go. You were created for God's purposes. And I remember when the Lord was dealing with me and he told me who I was and he told me what I was supposed to do. And he was like, who I am and what I'm supposed to do is not my call. God said, you are who you are because I made you. He said, your choice is whether or not you're going to live up to it. And I... I, I realized my level of pride. I realized that my whole everything was wrong. My perspective was wrong because I was looking at my life through my frame and my dream and my desires and my expectations and my everything. And God just threw that whole frame out because I was wrong. 
because I'm made out of clay and breath. And the only reason I'm alive is because he took the seed of my father, fertilized the egg of my mother and made me me. And he made me me for his purposes. That means that my life don't have to go the way I thought it should go because I don't exist for me. I exist for him. I know some of y'all are going to have to meditate on that for a while because it's going to change your whole everything. Some of y'all, you look back at your life and one of the things you mad at God about is because the devil came at you hard and the devil came at you harder than you ever thought he would. I'm going to explain that. Okay, here it is. Whenever God sends a chosen child of God into the world, whenever God sends a person of destiny into the world, the anointing and the anointing is the oil of God. The oil of God is on you when your mother is pregnant with you. Because you are anointed from the womb for the purpose for which God created you. I stopped by to tell you that Satan can see that when your mother is pregnant and he attacks your mom. Huh. That's why so many of us, our mothers went through so much before she even had us or while she was carrying us. The, and that happens to everybody that has a divine destiny because it happened to Moses. When Moses was born, remember that uh, the decree of Pharaoh was to kill all the boys under a certain age because the devil knew that Moses had a divine destiny. Remember that Moses' mother put him in a basket made out of reeds and set him out on the riverbank to save him from being caught and killed by Pharaoh's execution. Because the, uh, here's another principle that's going to hurt your brain. If, if you grow up in America, we're a country that raises its children on a steady diet of fairy tales. That's why you believe certain things. Okay. Here's the truth. There is no special protection for women and children or babies. There's no special protection. Protection is not automatic. That's what I mean by that. You've heard people say God protects fools and children. That ain't true. Fools die every day and kids die every day. That's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Where God always is, is in his purpose. But there is no automatic, because I'm a baby, protection on babies. How do we know that's true? Because if you live in a high rise and you live all the way up, you live very high, like on the 30th floor, and the baby gets out on the back balcony and that balcony is weak and the baby go over the edge, gravity does not look up and say, oh, Lord, it's a baby. So let me shut off to avert a tragedy. Let me shut off, says gravity, and I'm going to let the baby float. So the baby can just float harmlessly to the ground and we'll avoid a tragedy. That is not what gravity does. Gravity on all the time. Gravity works the same for everybody. That baby gonna fall because there's no special protection for women, for children, for babies. Ain't no special protection. That's a fairy tale that we made up. Uh-huh. When God flooded the earth in the days of Noah, when he flooded the earth with judgment, he just killed the men. Oh, I'm sorry. He killed everybody that wasn't in the ark with Noah. Men, women, young people, old people, military, civilian. God wiped out the human race down to one family of eight. How come he didn't spare the children if there's some special protection for children? How come God didn't say, I'm going to wipe out everybody but the babies? How come he didn't spare the senior citizens? How come he didn't spare the women? Everybody died. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. I know some of y'all, that's the first time in your life you heard it. But it is true. The problem is you have a fairy tale in your head where somebody convinced you that because you were a child, the devil wasn't coming after you. That's not true. Because you're a pregnant woman, that Satan wasn't coming after you. That's not true. Because you are female, that the devil's not coming after you. That's not true. None of that is true. None of that is true. Ain't no special protection for women, for pregnant women, for babies, infants, children. There's no special protection that's automatically conferred upon you just because you're born on earth. That's not the truth. 
we are oh we are raised to believe these fairy tales and that's why you mad at god right now because you thought well that wasn't supposed to happen to me according to who that can't happen to you who are you that that can't happen to you i know i know i know you didn't think this is where i was going i know but i had to learn some humility and we all have to learn humility that you don't tell the maker what you are for if you have been attacked by the devil welcome to earth wasn't the first family in the garden of eden didn't satan go after them didn't Satan talk to Eve and put some wrong ideas in her head to try to pull Adam and Eve into sin? And they went. Isn't that what happened? Why? That's a whole nother explanation I got to explain to you. That's a whole nother conversation I have, have time to have. But the point I will make there is that from the jump, we didn't have to fight the devil. That's not new. That's the point I'm trying to make there. Because there are reasons, there are reasons Satan is on earth. I don't have time to explain all that. But from the jump, we had to fight the devil. From the Garden of Eve, we still had to stand on the word of God and fight the devil. Let that hit. We ain't never had a life where we ain't had to fight the devil. Ever. That's a fairy tale. <laughs> That's a fairy tale. That's a fairy tale. It ain't real. It ain't true. It ain't never been true. From the day we arrived on this planet, God made a man, and then God said it's not good for man to be alone. Then God took a rib, built a woman. God stepped back, said it was very good. God created the first family, and then the next chapter over, because that was Genesis 1 and 2, and the next chapter over, Genesis 3 starts with, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So in other words, the first family had just been formed. We don't know how long Adam and Eve were together. How long did they even get to be together to have that beautiful life in the garden that God gave them? We don't know because the Bible doesn't say, but what we do know is here come the devil. Good God Almighty. So what I'm trying to tell, what I'm trying to break your bad theology from, what I'm trying to disavow you from is getting mad at God and life because you got attacked by the devil because everybody gets attacked by the devil from the beginning of mankind. That is not new. Okay, he is not new. <clears throat> Revelation 12 gives a picture and it's a sign, a lot of metaphors about a pregnant woman crying out in pain and then the dragon standing before the woman because she was in travail, she's gonna give birth. That's a picture of Jesus and Mary. So what the Bible is telling you there is that when the devil sees that a chosen child of God is coming to the world, he lines up against a pregnant mama. That's why some of y'all with divine destinies, it's why your mother got hit. That's why your mother has such a rough life because the devil saw the anointing when your mother was pregnant with you. That's why Pharaoh had all the babies killed. I remember that Herod did the same thing. It's called the massacre of the innocents or the slaughter of the innocents when Jesus was born. Uh, uh, long story short, Herod had all the young boys under the age of two years old and under in the area of Bethlehem killed because he recognized the star that they saw a signal that Messiah was on earth and the devil jumped in here and he tried to wipe Jesus out when he was still a boy. So I'm trying to make you understand that it is not a new thing that the devil comes after you. He comes after everybody, just not at the same time and not in the same way. But from the jump, we didn't have to fight the devil. That's not new, number one. And number two, when a chosen child of God is born into this world, the devil can see the anointing in the mother's womb. Why is that? Because this is another one that's going to hurt your head. The devil has known God longer than we have. I don't care who you are. Lucifer slash Satan has known Father, Son, and Holy Ghost longer than you have. Lucifer comes from heaven and fell to earth. We are born on earth. Lucifer came from the heavenly realm and fell down here. So he's familiar with what goes on in the heavenly realm. And when the anointing of God is on a chosen child of God in the womb of the mama, Satan can see that. And that's why some of y'all had such a rough childhood. But that's not fair because there ain't no fair. Ain't no such thing as fairness. Fairness is a human concept. It's something we made up. It does not actually exist in life. 
If you think your brother has some advantages, if you think your sister has some advantages, if you think your cousins has some advantages, whatever it is you think, and you've been crying your whole lifetime about that's not fair because it ain't no fair. Because there's no such thing as fairness. You got what you got and you got to deal with it. Just like every living thing. Every living thing, the ant don't get to be the eagle. The bullfrog don't get to be the butterfly. The gorilla don't get to be the giraffe. Okay? You got to deal with what God gave you. Because there's no such thing as fairness. You ain't going to never have a life where you get to look at somebody else and say, well, I don't have, why can I get that? That's not fair because that doesn't exist anywhere in life. You got what you got and you're going to have to deal with it. Because ain't no fair. Ain't no special protection. And we all got to deal with the devil. See? See what I mean? You see why we need to stop being mad at God? Why we stop need to be mad at life? We need to stop being mad at life and ask God the most important question, which is what is your purpose in this? That's the point. Because you've been arrested by divine purpose. Don't you know Jesus cried on, on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I asked the Lord when I was going through something, I cried out to God and looked like God wouldn't hear me. And the Lord spoke to me one day and said, the Lord said, I'm right here. And, and I was like, Lord, I've been praying. And the Lord said, I hear you, I'm right here with you. And then he said this to me, he said, extreme pain makes you feel forsaken by God. He said, that's how I felt on the cross. Jesus was not forsaken by Father on the cross because the last thing he said before he died was, Father, and to thy hands, I commit my spirit. How could he say that if he had been forsaken? And Father did not leave his body in the grave and Father did not leave his soul in hell. How could that happen to Jesus if Father God had actually forsaken him? He was not forsaken by God, but extreme pain makes you feel forsaken by God. I stopped by to tell you, those of you that are in or have been in extreme pain, you are not forsaken by God. I don't care what the trial, I don't care what the test, I don't care what the devil has done, God is right there with you. But you say, Prophet Taylor, why is he letting it happen? Why am I go Why did all this stuff happen to me? Because you have been arrested by divine purpose. The problem you're having is that you don't know the purpose. <laughs> I'm not laughing at stuff. Funny. Whoa, Lord, you don't understand that if you've ever been through the fire, it's because there's something coming in your life that requires you to be fireproof. That's why God allowed the fire, because you had to learn how to deal with fire because of the purpose he has for your life. If you grew up and you felt like you never fit in and you cry all the way to you was 25, 30 years old, because you felt like I just don't have a crowd. I just, everywhere I turn, look like, look like don't nobody want to be my friend. And you cried for 30 years. Do you know why that happened to you? That happened to you because you're supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to be on some level alone because you're a pioneer. And it was the very pain of that ostracization you felt from others that made you create the thing that you created. Just let that hit. If you had been who you wanted to be, Mr. or Mrs. Popular, Miss Queen Bee, Miss Everybody Loves Me, you would have never created the thing you created. The only reason you created it was because they cast you out. Just let that hit. See, it's his purpose that's the thing, not the pain. We obsess over the process. Why did it happen to me? And the pain, oh, I'm hurting so bad. It, but the point is the purpose. And I got to say this part too, before I wrap up, before I run out of time. Listen to me carefully. There are some women looking at me right now and some women that's going to watch this on the replay. The reason you haven't had children is because the Lord is trying to get your attention. You are Hannah. The reason your womb has been shut is because God is trying to send someone in particular, someone specific through your womb that's going to change a nation. That's who Samuel was. And he got to find a woman he can trust 
So he allowed Hannah, he closed her womb and let Hannah be childless until Hannah vowed a vow. She said, Lord, just please hear me. Please look upon my affliction. And if you give me a son, I'll give him right back to you all the days of his life. And that's what God was waiting on. Hannah to line up with his purpose, because that's who Samuel was, because when you are a prophet to a nation, you've got to get started with your prophet training as soon as possible. So as soon as uh, Hannah had Samuel, she weaned him and took him back to the house of the priest. Samuel actually grew up in the house of the priest. He didn't grow up with his mom. Can you imagine you've been waiting all that time to have a baby and you got to turn around and give him up? But that's what Mary had to do, didn't she? Mary got a prophetic word when she went to dedicate Jesus at the temple that a sword was going to pierce through her own heart. And what that meant was one day you can have to stand there and watch that boy die. Can you imagine being Jesus's mom? Most women think they give birth to a perfect child. What if you're Mary? And you actually did give birth to a perfect child. She had to stand there and watch that boy die. If Jesus don't die, we all going to hell. I'm going to say that one more time. If the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't die on that cross, we are all going to bust hell wide open. I know I would. Mary had to let the will of God happen and stand there and watch her boy die. Just imagine what that did to her. I knew a woman one time where her son got shot in front of her and she came to church the next Sunday and I don't understand why, because she couldn't even talk. Jesus was on the cross for six hours after they beat him. I can't, I can't imagine what that did to Mary. I can't imagine what that did to Mary, I can't imagine it. I don't wanna imagine it. I can't imagine what that did to that woman. But she had to let it happen. Because if Jesus don't die, we all going to hell. Do you understand? That's what I'm trying to get you to see. It doesn't matter what the devil did to you. It doesn't matter like Moses, if you tried to find your purpose and you messed up, it doesn't matter how they talked about you doesn't matter how they persecuted you. It doesn't matter. The process and the pain happen to get you into purpose. And the thing you need to do this Mother's Day is realize that you have been arrested. See, now there's some famous people. I wish I could get to them. There's some people on TV where Lord gave me a prophetic word and told me why they wouldn't have no kids. Because they had them. They got the spirit of Hannah. And some of y'all looking at me right now. I wish I could get to them. I wish I could tell them why you have why you have an infertility issues. You have an infertility issues because you've been chosen by God to bring an apostle or a prophet or a deliverer like Moses or Dr. King or a national prophet like Samuel or a herald like John the Baptist. You've been chosen by God to bring somebody like that in the world. And to bring somebody like that in the world, you've got to be on the same page with God from conception so that person can be raised right. That's why God was waiting on Hannah to surrender her will and surrender her expectations and said, I'll make this boy Nazarite. I will dedicate him to your service because that's what God was waiting on because God needed a prophet to lead the nations and that's who Samuel was. And some of y'all women, the reason you haven't had children is because you have the call of Hannah on your life. God has been trying to get your attention for years to let you know, I'm trying to send someone in particular through your womb but you're gonna to have to give that child back to me. There's a tendency when we have children to snatch you up and say, my baby, my son. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that. You've seen it too, you might've done it. You've seen people talking about my, my, not my daughter, not my son, my. When you've been called by God to a purpose, you're gonna to have to let that child go. Like Moses' mama had to put him in a basket of reeds and let him go. Like Mary had to watch her son die like Hannah, had to give Samuel back to the house of the priest because the point is not the process and not the pain. It's the divine purpose of God. And that's why you've been arrested. Now, there's a lot more I could say, but I'm coming up on my time, so I'm going to have to wrap up. So I'm going to, again, advise you. Okay, wait, the Holy Spirit is giving me something, so I'm going to have to release it. I'm gonna have to advise you again to watch this video from the beginning because you need every principle. Okay, because it's gonna break some stuff off you. This is gonna set you free from a lifetime of wondering why that happened to me. It happened to me because happened to you because God wants to use your life in a mighty way. The devil saw it before you did. And here's the thing: your parents might have dropped the ball. Some of y'all that have been abused, you know why you got abused? That wasn't God that did that. God didn't want you to be abused. You got abused because your mama or your daddy wasn't on the case. They weren't protecting you and that's how the devil got in. 
Some of y'all, you got abused because your father dropped you. He had you and then let somebody else raise you. <laughs> if your father didn't take responsibility for raising you, that means Lord knows what you got exposed to when you were a child. That see now that wasn't God. That there was not stuff that God caused. That was your father's irresponsibility. Some of y'all, you got abused because your mother cared more about the man than she did about you. That wasn't God. That's not what God wanted. Your mama's heart wasn't right. That's why you got abused. That's how the devil got in. But the devil saw the anointing in you. That's why he, <clears throat> why he went after you so hard. And the adults around you weren't walking with Christ strong enough to protect you. Oh, there's more I can say on that because that's deep. That's a deeper subject because it goes back generations. Like if you grew up in a single parent household, if your parents were never meant to be together, they just want to have sex. They just wanted to screw. And then they ended up making you and they never could get it together because they were never supposed to be together. They just wanted to lay together. They didn't want to stay together. They were never supposed to be together, but they let their lust get the best of them. And then if you came out of that, that's why you ain't never had no nuclear family. That's your parents' responsibility. That's not you. But God's going to take your life and do something with it that is divine and next level. And he's going to show you the purpose, how he can redeem every ounce of pain you've ever been through and set your sights higher than you've ever looked before. Only God can do that. That's why he's trying to get your attention. Because what you're looking for, you're not going to find it anywhere else. Yes, we're supposed to go to counseling. Yes, we're supposed to talk to people. Yes, we need help. Yes, we do, because we're human. But you're not going to find the divine purpose from anybody but the Lord. That's why he arrested you on this Mother's Day. That's why some of y'all have been resisting arrest for years. God is trying to get your attention so he can explain to you why you were born why you've been through everything you've been through and what he wants to do in your life. And I guarantee you, once you get that vision from the Lord, it's going to elevate. You know how I know that? Because I've been through it. It's going to elevate your thoughts and your mind and your vision so much higher than it is now until you go say just like Apostle Paul. All that other stuff, that's nothing. I, I'm just trying to forget it. I'm just trying to want to dwell on it because God has set something before me that is so much bigger than what I thought and so much grand and so much more important and so much more impactful that I don't have time to be crying and whining for the rest of my life about what the devil did to me because I've got something in front of me. See, when you hear me say that, for that to mean something to you, you have to get your vision from God. I'm talking about my vision from God. I'm talking about my process. But for those words I just spoke to actually mean something to you, you've got to get a vision from the Lord. He's the only one that can explain to you in detail the process and the pain that leads to the purpose. No one else can do it. And some of y'all been resisting arrest. You've been crying to God and crying to God and crying to God, but you're not listening. You're not listening to what he's saying. You've been talking to him, but you won't sit still long enough to let him talk to you because you're afraid of what he might say. I stop by to tell you, today is the day to stop resisting arrest. If God has been trying to get your attention is because what he's trying to give you, show you, and do for you is better than what you're living right now. Prophet Taylor, how do you know that? Because it happened to me. When the Lord started opening my eyes, he set my vision in a different place than I had it before. And I was like, wow, and now you don't want to do anything but forget. <laughs> All that stuff you used to trip on and worry about, and all that stuff you thought was important is nothing once you see the vision of Christ. Him and his purpose for you is going to outshine it, literally anything you've been through. I guarantee you, but you have to experience it to get the full impact of what I'm saying. So I have to say it so you can hear it, so you can believe it, so you know how to pray. But the experience of it is what's going to change your life. If you hear and believe what I'm telling you right now, the Lord is going to open up a vision of himself that you've never seen before. And the Lord is going to open up a vision for your life that you've never seen before. And when that happens, all that what you've been through going to look like a patch of bad road in your past. It's going to look like a little mud patch. It's, it's going to be nothing compared to the glory 
that he wants to reveal in your life. Now, let me release this prophetic word that the Holy Ghost has given me. For behold, my people, I say unto you, hear my voice today, hear my word today, and know that I am greater than all that you've been through. I'm greater than anything the devil did to you. I'm greater than any pain, and my purpose is beyond what you can imagine. So hear my voice through the mouth of the prophet, hear the word of God, hear my voice in the scriptures, hear me in your heart, hear me when you sleep, hear me when you dream. Hear me. That's me talking to you. You wonder why you can't get any sleep. You wonder why you can't find any rest anywhere you turn. That's me trying to get your attention because what I'm trying to show you and what I'm trying to give you is so much greater than what you've experienced so far until you're going to forget. Just like I got past the cross, as horrible as that experience was, it's because what Father gave me was so much greater that what, than what I went through that I moved on. And you will too, once you embrace with your whole heart everything that I want you to do in this life, and all that the devil's tried to do to you and work in your life will be things you're trying to shed and get rid of as fast as you can. So you can run the race that I set before you with joy and gladness. And if you hear me on this Mother's Day in 2021, your life will never again be the same. In three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months, one year from now, you won't even recognize yourself. You're going to be so changed and it's going to be so good. You're not even going to remember who you were, says the spirit of the living God. Uh, uh, uh. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. All right. So, amen. Praise God. Thanks so much. I'm going to ask you again, remember I told you each week, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. The one thing I want you to do this week is again, share this video because we need as many people as possible to, to watch Arrested and understand what's going on in their lives and what God is calling them to. So the Lord can elevate our thinking, elevate our vision and show us, show us what he's trying to do in our lives. And that will always outshine anything that the devil has done. All right. Amen. And God bless. That's today's prophetic word. Uh, I will be here this Thursday at seven o'clock for the next No More Genies. Remember, No More Genies happens once a month on the first Thursday of every month. So May came in on Saturday. So, you know, so here we've got the first Thursday coming up. Uh, excuse me. Second Thursday, second Thursday, second Thursday. So did I say first. I was confusing that with my hymn. Second Thursday. I'm sorry. Second Thursday is coming up this Thursday. So I'm going to be here at seven o'clock p.m for no more genies. And uh, we're gonna do Who Is God part four. So don't miss that. Then I'll be here next Sunday, regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for my next weekly live prophetic word. Watch it from the Bahamas. Amen, Sister Bainwell. Tell everybody in the Bahamas that you know that's going through something, they've been arrested by God and we need to get to his purpose. Amen and amen. So enjoy your Mother's Day. Enjoy the rest of the day. And let's find something to praise God about. Let's not find something to complain about today, but let's find something to thank God for and move forward uh, on his purpose. All right? All right. I will talk to you Thursday, and then I'll see you next Sunday. Amen and God bless.